Chair recognizes Mr. Moskowitz from Florida for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank uh, the mayor uh, for being here uh, and your approach uh, to this issue uh, over you know, the last several months and, and, quite frankly, the last several years. I want to remind you know, my colleagues across the aisle that six out of the top ten high crime states are red states. So I assume at some point, since we're, we're now the crime committee, I assume at some point we're going to have the attorney generals from those states to talk about what we can do in those red states on crime. You know, it's interesting that I guess we want to we wanna be the D.C. Council. Um, and here we are yet another hearing on crime. And yet we have not heard the other side talk about gun violence. Again, I want to remind them gun violence is crime. Mass shootings are crime. We heard that Taiwan has really low crime. Well, Taiwan doesn't allow mentally ill people to buy AR-15s, unlimited ammunition, and body armor. Possibly one reason why Taiwan has slightly lower crime than us. You know, a member of this committee had someone burst into their office and injure staff members. We, we should be thankful that that person didn't have a gun. Because instead of two injured staff members, we'd have two dead staff members. And yet, we're not doing anything to stop mentally ill people from being able to buy AR-15s and unlimited ammunition in this country. Gun trafficking. Gun trafficking in D.C. is a huge issue. My friends across the aisle like to talk about illegal people all the time, but they don't want to talk about illegal guns. They don't want to talk about all the illegal guns that are being trafficked in D.C. They don't want to say the word gun at all. D.C. went from being a single-digit ghost gun area to now having 461 ghost guns recovered in 2022. In fact, semi-automatic weapons are being converted to automatic weapons. We've seen an increase in that by 340 percent. We don't hear that at all from the other side, even though they're so focused on crime. We, we heard a question about myocarditis. Serious, it's a fair question but also not the leading cause of school-aged children dying. That's guns. And so we can't continue to take these hearings serious when we're talking about crime if we're not going to talk about gun violence. You're, you're not in denial. I know you know this. You just don't want to talk about it because it's politically expedient. We heard another member talking about books. You know, books in school. Look, I'm sure there's a couple of books that, you know, we could take out of the classroom, but books ain't killing kids. And dead kids can't read, to remind you again. And so, you know, we even passed a D.C. disapproval in Congress. I voted for it, by the way, Mr. Chairman. The president signed it, okay? And so, you know, what I don't understand is why, why are we wasting this committee's time, the United States oversight committee's time for the second time on just Washington, D.C., just the district. No other state, no other issue. And why, again, are we talking about crime when we're not talking about gun violence? I just came from a hearing on fentanyl, and I had to listen to parents testify and talk about how they're losing their kids to fentanyl. Serious issue. I support the chairman of that committee's bill. The data is clear on fentanyl, but you know what else? The data is clear on gun violence. The numbers don't lie, and yet we're ignoring it. Perhaps we can maybe depoliticize the issue one day like we're doing with fentanyl, because it's important. Watching parents continue to bury their children because they sent them to school, or they sent them to a movie theater, or they went to a grocery store, or they were in a church, or they were in a synagogue, is despicable. And so, look, I know you guys are busy. I know you got stuff going on. You're trying to find, you know, the fake informant that you've now has gone missing. I know you're busy with that. You know, but I'm hoping that perhaps the Oversight Committee, if they're so worried about, you know, federal overreach, perhaps they can start, you know, being focused on real government oversight. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Gimlin yields back before I recognize uh, Ms. Bobert. With respect to the missing informant, uh, just so you know, just to clarify, the, the Grassley whistleblower is alive and well. 